came to know the Lord um, when I was 17, 1984. Got baptized at Hillcrest Baptist Church in Tyler, Texas. And you know, I did really good when I first started out. I was reading the Bible all the time. I was sharing with a friend of mine at high school who was really there to encourage me and come alongside and hold me accountable. Uh, I was making sure I prayed uh, like I should. And did pretty good until I got out of high school. <laughs> got out into the real world, moved away from home, and uh, spent a couple of years at, at college. But, you know, got more and more into music. It was something I had started playing music when I was 14 years old. And, you know, just ended up playing all the time, got into a lot of different bands. And as I got into college, I got a lot more serious with it and uh, started playing with some pretty good musicians and eventually decided that's what I wanted to do. Through the people I met, I had some opportunities after a couple of years in college to be able to go out and travel on the road making a living. And I couldn't say no. I mean, it was just too exciting to know I could be on tour buses, I could travel around and, and be able to see different parts of the country. So as I spent a few years doing that, you know, I started getting an attitude and ego because a lot of people would always come back, hey Dave, man, you sound great, your guitar playing phenomenal, you're awesome. And you know it's just people saying stuff, but you know, it can be dangerous because you start to believe it. Um, which led me unfortunately to become self-centered and cocky and say things to other band members that a lot of times I wished I hadn't said. And through the years of playing, it got to the point where I started to get frustrated because I wasn't constantly playing all the time. You know, I would maybe play for six months and then I would have to find odd jobs, whether it was picking up trash in parking lots of clubs or whether it was, you know, working uh, at an auto shop, changing oil, so ending up sleeping on friends' couches. Well, that just got to the point where I was like, you know, I'm, I'm done with music. Finally got fed up with it and I quit playing. As my life went along, I ended up meeting a woman. We ended up getting married. Uh, didn't do it biblically. We ended up living together for a couple of years before we even got married. I moved to Iowa, ended up getting into a job in radio in the middle of Iowa at a little AM station. But I was working all the time and it was really frustrating. I was doing every imaginable job that you could at the station, working 16 hours a day being angry, just mad that I was working so much. And through my anger, through my selfishness, and being cocky and only caring about myself, I ended up ruining my marriage. So there I am in the middle of Iowa, divorced, just totally at the end of my rope, at the end of myself. And that's when God ended up bringing a gentleman named Steve White through to the radio station. And Steve was a strong Christian, a believer, he helped me get back into God's Word. He helped me regain my faith and see that God hadn't turned away from me. I had turned away from God. But this all led up to a point where, you know, with everything hitting me at one time, I found myself one night just with the weight of the world on me at my home, and I couldn't take it anymore. And I fell on my knees. I'm like, God, why is this happening? I thought all my plans, you know, were the right ones. Why aren't they going right? And God said, Dave, your plans aren't my plans. When you're ready to see what I have in store for you, then you let me know. Well, after that, Steve ended up coming out to Arizona and taking a job at a Christian radio station, Radio Shine 90.9. And about three months later, I ended up following him out here. And it was amazing to see the difference between Christian radio and secular radio. And through the people that I met, in fact, one of the local pastors I met through the radio station, was one who encouraged me to start playing music again because I had put all my equipment away, hadn't picked it up for six years. So through meeting him, I started playing again. And as I got into playing, I heard through the radio station about Covenant 31, a local Christian band. And a friend of mine said, you know, they're gonna be looking for a guitar player. The guitar player is gonna be moving and they're gonna need a new one. And I'm like, okay, that's fine, but I have no desire to do that. Well, my plans, of course, aren't God's plans. <laughs> had something in store, you know, for me other than what I thought I was going to do. And he kept orchestrating meetings between myself and the band where eventually it was suggested that I come over and audition. Well, I was really hesitant about that. And even as I started listening to the music, I enjoyed it, but I was still kind of like, uh, I don't know about this. But once I got over and started practicing and the first time I got together with a band, it just clicked. 
I mean, I felt at peace, like, okay, Lord, this is where I need to be. And it's been four years since that first day I walked into the practice room and started playing with a band. And to see where God has taken us has been absolutely amazing. He's taken us from starting off playing downtown Prescott on the courthouse square to eventually being handpicked by Mercy Me to open the Rock and Worship Roadshow and perform in front of thousands of people at the U.S. Airways Arena in Phoenix. And as I look back and see all those times in my life where, you know, I could have made one decision and went a certain way, and God kept me from doing that. He guided me and steered me in the way I needed to go. It really brings to mind Jeremiah 29, 11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future.